This is the new 2023 Toyota GR Corolla, and it's a new high-performance hatchback from Toyota. Although that's understating things a bit because this is basically a sports car. 300 horsepower, all-wheel drive, manual transmission only, and some quirks and features that elevate it to the very top of the performance hatchback world. And today, I'm going to review it. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era with free listings. You can list your cool car for free and auction it on Cars and Bids. And you should, because we've had some great sales recently, including this Honda S2000, which sold for just under $30,000. We've done great with S2000s on Cars and Bids. This Ford Transit Connect van that has a full engine swap from a Focus S2000 which is amazing. That also sold for just under $30,000. And this wonderful new Ford Bronco Wild Track, which sold for just over $62,000. We've had a lot of success with new Ford Broncos on cars and bids. If you're looking to buy or sell a cool enthusiast car from the modern era, Cars and Bids is the place to do it. With daily auctions and great selection and free listings, check it out at carsandbids.com. All right, time for the quirks and features of the GR Corolla. Let's start in an obvious place, the mechanicals. Now, first things first, all of these come with a six-speed manual transmission. You cannot get an automatic, you can't get a dual clutch, none of that stuff is offered. This is six-speed manual only. And all of these also come with all-wheel drive. There's no front-wheel drive, base model version. All GR Corollas are all-wheel drive, manual transmission. Now, you're probably thinking that's a pretty good start for a high-performance hatchback until you discover that this car is powered by a 1.6 liter three cylinder engine. <laughs> 1.6 liter three cylinder doesn't really sound that high performance -y. and you can tell that this is indeed a three cylinder because there are three lines on the plastic engine cover which is the universal symbol of how many cylinders a car has how many lines are on its engine cover so three cylinder engine could they really be serious well this three cylinder is turbocharged for 300 horsepower and 275 pound feet of torque which are really strong figures now this is the same powertrain that's in the GR Yaris, not sold in North America, another high-performance Toyota hatchback, although that has about 270 horsepower. This is an extra 30 on top of that for 300 horses. Now, that's a pretty healthy figure, but it is behind some rivals. The new Honda Civic Type R and the Volkswagen Golf R both have 315 horsepower, so this is a little behind, but it's also cheaper. The Civic Type R and the Golf R both start at $44,000. This car, GR Corolla, starts at $37,000 for the base model, the core version, so it's quite a bit cheaper. Now, this version of the GR Corolla is the circuit model, sort of the higher spec version, and it starts right around $44,000. And then there's another limited edition version called the Morizo edition. That one starts around $51,000, but I'll get into some of the trim level differences a little bit later. And by the way, since we're talking engine, if you're wondering, EPA rates the fuel economy at 21 miles per gallon in this city, 28 miles per gallon on the high highway and 24 miles per gallon in combined city and highway driving. Not exactly economy car territory, but not bad for a serious performance car. But this car is cooler for way more than just the powertrain. I also love the way that it looks. Toyota took the standard Corolla hatchback, sort of a regular economy car, and they made it cool. They widened the fenders. You can see in front a widened flared fender, but more importantly in back, they grew it out dramatically. It almost looks like the car has muscle bulky rear fender flared over the back tires. It just looks so cool and so rally car and so different from a standard Corolla. Now, along the side, I also love the rocker panels which connect the flared fenders in front and back. They look cool, sporty, and they have GR4 imprinted on the side. GR is Toyota's latest performance brand. It stands for Gazoo Racing, sort of like their race team. And then four, of course, means four or all-wheel drive that this car has. 
Those rocker panels look great, perfect complement to these flared fenders. Now, on the side, you can also see the brake calipers, red calipers for the GR Corolla, and they also have the GR logo on them to leave no doubt at all that this is the special performance model. But beyond that, there are a lot of other cool exterior items on this car. For one thing, there's a lot of vents on the outside of the GR Corolla to help emphasize its performance. You see some on the front wheel arches that draw attention to their width and give this car a more performancey look. But as far as front vents go, I especially like the ones on the hood. They're there for heat extraction, obviously, and they look very cool. But most importantly, they look cool when you're in the driver's seat. You look out over these vents and they give you kind of a constant reminder that you're in a special performance car and not just something with a normal non-vented hood. Now, speaking of the front of this car, it's worth pointing out that the entire front end and grille has been massively enlarged compared to the standard Corolla and Corolla hatchback. You can see much, much bigger. Obviously, part of that is looks to make the car look and feel more aggressive, but it's also for airflow. You get more air coming into this engine. Tiny engine, turbocharger, very important to suck as much air in as possible. And so the opening in the front helps the car do that by being, well, massive. And it's the same deal in back, a much more aggressive performancey car compared to the standard Corolla hatchback. The most obvious and immediately noticeable upgrade back here is that the widened rear fenders flow into a generally wider body and back, and it gives this car a much more muscular, high-performance look than a standard Corolla, and frankly, more than just about any other hot hatchback I've ever seen. It really looks like it means business back here. You also have a lower section in black, sort of a nice performance touch, and it turns into a diffuser, and as you look down there, you can also see that this car has three exhaust pipes. Now, I recently made fun of the new Civic Type R in a video for having three exhaust pipes for four cylinders. Well, this car has three exhaust pipes for three cylinders, which is really stupid. It's just total overkill and I hate it. But I will say I do prefer the look of these three exhaust pipes compared to the Civic Type R. And the Civic, they're all right in the middle, centered, and it calls attention to the exhaust overkill. At least in this car, they're spaced apart. And another cool upgrade of the GR Corolla compared to the standard Corolla hatchback is a carbon fiber roof. This car has a full carbon fiber roof panel like you see on some serious sports cars. Well, here it is on the GR Corolla. Now, this helps keep weight down in general. Carbon fiber is lighter than a piece of painted sheet metal, but it also also helps keep weight down at the top of the car, which is important because that helps to lower the center of gravity. Anytime you can remove weight higher up, it helps bring down the center of gravity, the center of mass, and that helps improve the car's handling. But not all GR Corolla models have this carbon fiber roof, and that brings us to a discussion of trim levels. So here's the deal. Like I said, the base model is called the Core, and that one starts around $37,000. This one is the upgraded version. It's called the Circuit, and it's sort of the higher spec version of the two, and it has a lot of upgrades compared to the core. One is this carbon fiber roof, which the core model does not have. Another one is this rear roof spoiler. The core has a roof spoiler, but it's body colored and smaller. This car's is larger and black, and it looks sportier. In front, the core doesn't have those cool hood vents. You only get those on the circuit, not on the core, and that's an easy way to distinguish the two when you're just seeing them on the street. The circuit's got the vents. Now, beyond that, the circuit also adds more rigidity compared to the core, so in theory it's going to handle better, and it adds Michelin Pilot Sport tires, which is a serious, grippy, high-performance tire that will also help to improve its track performance and handling compared to the base model core version. And next up, we move inside, where the circuit also adds some upgrades over the core. For one thing, these suede seats, which look very cool, feel very upscale and performancey, those come on the circuit, you can't get them on the core. Also, the circuit model adds some tech features compared to the core, all GR Corolla models come standard with the center touchscreen, as you can see, and with a full screen gauge cluster. But the circuit model adds navigation to the touchscreen that's not available on the core. The circuit model also adds a JBL 8 speaker sound system and it adds a wireless charging pad, as you can see down here. Again, not available on the core. Now, in addition to all of this, the circuit is actually lighter than the core. Toyota says the circuit model will be about 22 pounds lighter. Not a huge amount, but a little bit. And when you add all this stuff up, there are some real benefits for the circuit compared to the core that help the circuit to justify its $7,000 price increase. So the circuit is going to be the one that everybody wants. Only one problem, it's not going to be the volume model. Toyota says they're going to make 5,100 units of the core, the base model, and only 1,500 units of the circuit. This
this version, the more upgraded model, which I think is a mistake. Frankly, I think those numbers should be flipped, but I suspect those production numbers aren't finalized. I have a suspicion that when Toyota sees the demand for this car, they're probably going to do another couple model years and more production run, and then maybe we'll get a different split of trim levels or they'll change the trim levels entirely. Who knows? But for now, that's how it's going to start. Now, it's also worth pointing out there is one other trim level. It's a special model called the Morizo Edition. I did a full walk around video with the Morizo Edition earlier this year, and I'm going to link that in the description below if you want to get up close and personal with a Morizo. But that car costs around $51,000. It's limited to only 200 units, and it doesn't have a back seat. It's an ultra performance focused, track focused model that they add a lot of upgrades to. They pull out the back seat, and it's really supposed to be the ultimate performer for track use, kind of like the Mini Cooper GP, similar thing. They pull out the back seat of that and make it even more performance, limited edition at the top of the range. That's what the Morizo will be for the GR Corolla. But anyway, let's talk through the quirks and features of this interior. Let's go back and start with those seats, which are suede in the circuit model, like I showed you, but they're also cool, grippy performance seats designed to keep you in place during hard quartering. They're comfortable, they look good, they feel good, they're good seats, and they also have the GR logo embroidered into the headrest. In fact, the interior of this car is a bit of GR overload. You have it in several different places. The base of the steering wheel, you can see GR. At the top of the gear shifter, you can see GR. On the start-stop button, you can see GR. And like I mentioned, embroidered in the top of headrest. You also have it on the gauge cluster screen. GR, always staring you in the face. This is a screen, so everything in here is dynamic and changing except for that GR, which is always in that spot, making sure you never forget. Now, one other item you'll notice in here throughout this interior is red stitching to emphasize the performance nature of this car. Of course, you must have red stitching. So you got red stitching on the seats all throughout, which looks nice. You got red stitching on the parking brake and the parking brake boot. You got red stitching on the shift lever boot, as you can see, and the trim that surrounds the shift lever. You got red stitching on the steering wheel as well, and there's more red stitching over on the door panel. Interestingly, there is stitching on the dashboard, but it's not red. It's just black. I guess they decided that was where you draw the line. You can't put red stitching on the dashboard. No, no. You just do it everywhere else, and, and, then, and then you stop at the dashboard. <laughs> but anyway, let's talk through some cool performance-y stuff in this interior. Probably the coolest is this dial here in the center console, which you can use to adjust the torque split of the all-wheel drive system. When you turn the car on in standard mode, it's at 60% front and 40% rear wheel drive. So a little bit front biased in normal driving. If you twist this dial, you can adjust that to 70% rear and 30% front. So heavily rear biased in case you want to power slide, get the tail out, do some drifting. That's the mode you want to be in. Or you can push the dial, push it in for track mode, which locks the all wheel drive system at 50-50. 50% front, 50% rear, an even torque split. And Toyota says that is designed for the very best handling, which is why they call it track mode. That'll get you through the corners with the most finesse, as opposed to front biased, which you don't want, and rear biased, which may be a little too tail happy. So those are the modes you can choose and decide on the torque split for the all-wheel drive system. Now, also here in the center console, you have this little switch that allows you to choose the drive mode. You have a custom drive mode that you can adjust to your own specifications. Beyond that, you have three others, sport, normal, and eco, which strikes me as a little odd that there are two kind of lesser than sport modes and only one sport mode in this ultra sporty car. But I guess you do also have the custom mode that you can dial up. Still, I bet this car is not going to be driven in eco or normal all that often. Now, one thing I couldn't figure out when I got in this car and started driving it is why it wasn't rev matching. Virtually all new manual transmission cars have a built-in rev matching feature that makes downshifts especially easy, but this car wasn't doing it. And I couldn't figure out why or how to turn it on. I was playing around in the screens, the gauge screen, all the settings menus. I couldn't find where to turn it on until finally I discovered this button to the left of the steering wheel, which is labeled IMT, and that turns on the rev matching. Very obscure location and a very obscure label, which I guess stands for like intelligent manual transmission. Anyway, the point is once you turn it on, the car will rev match, but interestingly, you have to turn it on every single time. You get in the car, it does not default to on. It will turn itself off every time 
and you have to return it on to turn on rev matching. But anyway, next up, moving on to some more general quirks and features in here. One complaint of these high performance hatchbacks tends to be that they're not really all that nice inside because ultimately they're based on low priced, low budget, kind of cheap economy cars. And then they're just given a lot of extra power and performance, but not a full interior makeover. And that's certainly true in this case as well. Ultimately, there's a lot of Corolla in this interior. I complained about the new Volkswagen Golf R that it's not as upscale as it used to be. Well, it's still better than the GR Corolla on the inside. Same deal with the new Civic Type R. I was just in that. Looks like a Civic inside, but that's nicer than the GR Corolla. It definitely feels relatively inexpensive, relatively base model Toyota in here, with the exception of the nice seats and a few other areas. You do feel a lot like you're driving a Corolla until you step on the throttle. Now, with that said, you do have some nice features in here that you don't necessarily have in all rivals. For instance, this little button turns on the heated steering wheel, which is something you don't have in the Honda Civic Type R, and you got heated seats. As you can see, these little switches in the center, which again, is something you don't have in the Civic Type R. It's also nice to see that wireless charging pad there. You don't always get that in cars like this, but this one has it, and so that's a pretty nice touch. Now, moving on to the center screen, like I said, this car has a navigation system built into that center screen, being a circuit model, and that's another advantage over the Civic Type R. Although other than that, the infotainment screen doesn't really have a lot of great pluses. It works fine, but it's relatively small and it's fairly limited in what it displays. Small screen, can't display two items, and not really all that much going on. Not a lot of crazy innovations or cool features in here. It works and that's about it. You will also be disappointed by the resolution of the backup camera, as you can see, just really not all that great. Again, giving you kind of that Corolla feel, even though you're in the expensive GR Corolla. Now, the gauge cluster screen is a little bit better. For one thing, it's far more configurable than other Toyota gauge cluster screens that I've complained about in the past. You can configure the left, the middle, and the right parts of the screen to show various information, but it's not as configurable as Golf R, which gives you a lot more functionality here. You still can't get, for example, the music that is currently playing in the gauge cluster display. I don't understand why that is. And you also can't get the map in there. So it's configurable, but you're kind of stuck with the configurations that they've chosen, which may not be exactly what you want to see. Still not that bad and a good high resolution screen. But anyway, next we move on to the back seat in the GR Corolla, which is well, small, frankly. It's really very tight back here. I'm only fitting pretty well because I moved the front seat and the seat back pretty far up, but otherwise it's pretty tight in back. Now that's really no surprise. This is based on the Toyota Corolla, which is a compact car, and it's no different from rivals. The Civic Type R, the Golf R, the Focus RS, they all feel small in back as well. It's sort of the nature of the beast of a hot compact hatchback, but it is small back here, just confirming. Now with that said, it's pretty nice back here. You do have the same sway seats that you had in front carried onto the back, which is cool, and some of that red stitching. You got it on the seats, as you can see, which looks nice, and you have it on the door panel, which helps to add a bit of a luxury touch in back. And you got a couple of nice convenience features back here, too. For one thing, map pockets on the backs of both front seats, which some cars don't have in this segment, but the GR Corolla does. More importantly, you got charge points back here, which is nice. Cigarette lighter style outlet and USB-C for the back back seats, which is really nice to have. And you got a lot of cup holders. You got cup holders in the doors, as you can see, one on each side, and fold down the center armrest, and you have even more cup holders in case you want to have like a drink party in the back seat. Well, then I suppose you can. And by the way, speaking of that center armrest, worth pointing out, if you fold it back up, there are three seats back here, three seats with three seat belts. It would be really tight to try to get someone back here, but it does exist. I point that out because the Civic Type R is a four-seater, two in front, two and back, the GR Corolla is slightly more practical if seating capacity is what you're after. And finally, we move on to the cargo area of the GR Corolla, which is actually kind of interesting. The battery has been relocated to the cargo area. In regular Corolla models, it's in front. Here, it's in back for weight distribution. That's one more heavy thing that you don't have to have over the front axles. You put it in back, and weight distribution is a little bit more even. But in doing that, you then have a big battery in the trunk. So what Toyota did was they 
created this compartment to go around the battery and have little slots for things like a tire inflator kit and various tools and that sort of thing. And then on top of all that, you have the load floor in the trunk. Now, you can remove this compartment around the battery. You can just take it all out, and then you'll have the same lower load floor you'd get in the standard Corolla hatchback, but then you'll have a random battery sticking up in the middle of the trunk, so you probably don't want to do that. So the result is you do have a higher floor than what you'd get in the regular Corolla hatchback, and it looks a little strange, especially because it's just stuck in the middle of the cargo area. The spaces to the left and right of it, stuff can just fall down in there. It's not particularly well executed, but it's there, and you do have cargo space here, just a little less than you might normally get. Now, with that said, just like in all of these hot hatchback models, you can put down the rear seats if you want extra cargo space, and as you can see, with them down, you do have pretty good cargo space back here. You don't really pay much mind to the fact that you've lost like six inches of height in the back if you want to carry something large, but still, you have lost a little space and a little practicality. All right, driving the GR Corolla, and there is so much to say. I want to start off with my first impressions of this car when it was announced. This car was revealed and people went crazy. Oh my God, we're getting a GR hatchback. This is so cool. I can't wait. I looked at the numbers and I was not quite as impressed. I thought to myself, 300 horsepower and all wheel drive hatchback. Great. That's what the Focus RS was five years ago when it came out. You know, what's so who cares? It didn't seem like that special to me. And that became especially cemented when I drove the GR Yaris. Not a lot of American journalists have had a chance to get behind the wheel of that car, but I did. I drove one from Mexico and that car is amazing. And it seemed to me like we were getting the GR Corolla as sort of a consolation prize. The GR Yaris is this purpose-built, ultra-special hatchback that was a homologation rally car. And they were like, well, we can't bring that to the US because we don't sell the Yaris there. Let's give them the Corolla instead. And it just didn't seem like it was better than the other hot hatchbacks that already existed. And so I wasn't sure I would like this car. And then this morning happened. I woke up incredibly early. I'm a little sick. Um, daylight savings time just happened. And I decided I would take this car out and just beat on it. It was 6 a.m. There was nobody on the road. And I just got on it and went on some really fun roads, totally empty. And it was one of those moments when you just totally connect with a car, like you're in the right spot. One of the things that I just, I'm worried that EVs will never be able to replace. And I've now come around completely about this car. Let me tell you my thoughts. First off, this car is pretty focused. By that I mean, I just had the uh, Civic Type R. I just filmed the review of that like a couple days ago. And so I'm pretty much driving them back to back. And I had the Golf R only a few months ago. This car is more hardcore than those. It just is. For one thing, the ride is rougher. This car has very stiff suspension. It's daily drivable, it's usable, but it is way stiffer feeling than the Civic Type R and definitely than the Golf R. Number two, not as much luxury stuff. You don't have a power sunroof, you don't have, there's a dual zone climate control, you're missing some stuff in this car. The tires feel loud on the road. The, the wind noise is loud. The blow off valve is loud. When you accelerate hard and then back off the throttle, you easily hear that. This car is more purpose built as a performance car and a sports car than the Civic Type R and the Golf R. Now, for some people, this will not be a benefit. A lot of people buy these high performance hatchbacks so that they can drive them to work Monday through Friday, and then on the weekends, if they have time with their buddies, they go out on a canyon and or a curvy road or whatever, and they can do that. This car is more about the curvy roads and less about daily driving. You can drive it every day, but it's kind of punishing and it's not incredibly luxurious or nice, and it's, it's a sports car. It really is a sports car. And that's also true of the powertrain. This car is not all that fast low in the rev range. The cool thing about it is it's the perfect amount of power and the engine is really responsive when you get high in the rev range. From four to 6,000 RPM, this car is a joy an absolute joy, and it sounds good. And then there's the handling. To me, this is the best part of the whole car. The car absolutely comes alive when you throw it around and you feel incredibly confident. I'm not sure if it's the wider track or the wider tires or the fact that they're just stickier tires or the all-wheel drive, probably more the all-wheel drive, 
But this car feels so much more confidence inspiring to me than the Civic Type R. That car has some understeer, that car has torque steer, this car doesn't deal with any of that. All wheel drive is absolutely the way to go in a 300 horsepower hot hatchback and this car proves it. And driving it back to back with the Civic Type R, it is no comparison. The steering precision might be a little better in the Civic, but this car, you floored in corners, you feel like a pro. You feel like you can't screw up, you feel like it digs in and grips and goes forever and it is so confidence inspiring. Truthfully, I'm filming this video and I wake up this morning and I'm sick and I'm like, I get, just gotta get this done. And by the time I'm actually out shooting it after I've had some fun with the car, I'm like enamored with this thing. Like, can I get one of these at sticker? Is that even possible? Well, okay, fine, if I have to pay over how much? I love this thing. But again, huge caveat, I don't commute, I don't have a nine to five where I drive in the same route every day setting in bumper to bumper. If that's you, this may not be the car. But if it's not, if you can buy this car to just screw around with, woo! <laughs> this is the car. It is so exciting and so much fun and so thrilling. And I find it a lot, a lot more engaging than Civic Type R and less expensive if you get a core. Now it's again worth pointing out, I think Civic Type R is more civilized. Civic Type R is also nicer inside and a lot of people will be looking for that. But, but the most like balls to the wall, hardcore hot hatchback, the Focus RS used to be that, it's gone. This is that now. And I just love beating on this car, keeping the revs high, going around corners hard. This car is a lot of fun and, and kind of compromised and kind of hardcore, which I like. And so that's the 2023 Toyota GR Corolla. Like I said, I wasn't that excited about this car on paper. It just didn't seem to move the hot hatchback game forward as much as all the hype around this car implied. But after driving it, I feel totally differently. If you compare it to its rivals, the Focus RS and ST, the Golf R, the GTI, the Veloster N, the Civic Type R, all of them, this is the the one I would get, just prepare for a bit of a hardcore driving experience. Anyway, now it's time to give the GR Corolla a Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 63 out of 100, which is a huge score that ties the GR Corolla with the current supreme reigning hot hatchback, the outgoing Volkswagen Golf R. It also means the GR Corolla beats out the new Golf R and the new Civic Type R, and I think that's right. The GR Corolla is more fun than both of those cars, and the Doug score is meant to be biased towards performance cars. But the GR Corolla is also compromised with an average interior and a harsh ride. Both the Civic Type R and the Golf R are more daily drivable. The GR Corolla is just more fun.